So I'll start with, um, we're implementing an ERP, you know, uh, so that is obviously going to be a major focus for not only us in DTMB, but everybody, right, in the state of Michigan. It's a big deal. Um, we're also really focused on uh, mobility and how are we, t we call it customer-centered government. How are we taking our services to our citizens using um, technology, mobile technology, right? And then finally, a real strong focus on cybersecurity and, you know, how are we, you know, really maybe focusing on not only the infrastructure, but really detection and response. It's going to be some, that's something we really all got to get better at. Yeah, and I guess I would add to that in addition to those specific things, um, there's a real focus on uh, customer service at the agency. And so this year under you know, David's leadership, we did the first ever uh, statewide customer satisfaction survey that went out to all 47,000 state employees and that we looked at all of the services that DTMB provides, whether it's on the IT side or the old uh, management side. And so that's a real focus for us. How do we build those partnerships with our customers? Uh, how do we, you know, work in a credible fashion uh, so that we can have a good partnership with all of our customer, agency customers? So, you know, we have uh, openmichigan.gov, right? It's, it's, it's all about open data and how are we going to do that. And so that's been going on for a couple, few years, actually about three or four years. The other one we're doing, though, is our, called Enterprise Information Management. We have seven, I think seven or eight agencies who are piloting, bringing how do we bring our data together, use that data in a real positive way. Um, to really, it really the main focus, what Brown was talking about earlier, is the focus on how do we improve customer service and that customer-centered government. And so that's something that uh, we hope to actually, that'll morph more into open data. Uh, because there's certain things that, you know, in EI, we call it EIM, Enterprise Information Management, or big data. You know, a lot of that should be just you know, out there, open data. And so uh, in the process of doing the EIM project, we'll be pushing some of that, more of that data into open, open data, open Michigan mm -hmm. data .gov. Yeah, and it's really changing the mindset of the agencies to look at, for years, they've been great custodians of their data and they're protecting it the way that they should, but it's really changing that mindset to say, this isn't your data or my data, this is the public's data. And wherever possible, we should be sharing it so that the public can, you know, benefit from that. So I think we, th we think that that EIM project will really yield some great results in the years to come. So we're looking at, you know, several things. Fraud, how do you, how, through the EIM project, the big data project, how are you bring it all together to look at fraud issues? How are you looking at it for like, you know, for people who are a little bit less fortunate than us, and maybe someone's the family members on free lunch, school free lunch. How do we use that data to identify the other programs that they're, that they're they're eligible for without them having to go through all the, you know, in a good way, the bureaucratic processes. You know, that's, and so we really want to push data as the way to provide better customer service. You know, if you think about, you know, we have an app, mobile app called MyPage. Go ahead and download it at any of the stores. The idea around that is to, if you opt in for that service, how can we push services to you like Amazon or some of those private companies do? You know, like in Amazon, you go and you buy something, and before, right when you put it in the cart, like seven other things show up that you have to have, right? And you, you know, we all want those things. So why shouldn't government provide the same level of service? We think that's where big data and the data and how we're gonna use data in the future is gonna take us. It's a tricky, you know, it's tricky, you know, because you still got to focus on how are you protecting the data, right? You also got to focus on what data, as Brahma saying, should be open data. And you, you want to make sure you're, you're, you're doing that in a good way. You also got to look at um, the balance between protecting everything and also having customer service. And so, you know, if you think about it, every day you're hearing about someone getting, getting hacked, getting breached. Um, and I don't want to say it's a way of life almost, but... I mentioned earlier um, in an earlier conversation, detection and response are going to be key as well. So it's a real balancing act, and uh, I'm not sure we're, we're quite there yet. I'm not sure who's quite there yet, but um, it's the balance between protecting your data, having open data, and also um, customer service. So when we look at 
um, you know, the call for projects with both enterprise projects as well as agency specific projects. That's one of the things that we're looking at and that's a criteria you use is what's the return on investment for this? Are there cost savings down the road? And as we build that case and as we use that as a criteria for choosing the projects, that helps us with credibility with, you know, the governor who's been a great supporter of IT, and with the legislature. You know, David over the years has done a great job in building those partnerships with the legislature. And to say for, you know, our ITIF, which is the ongoing pot of money that the legislature uh, is providing for these big projects, for us to be able to go back and say, here's how we've spent that money responsibly, here's the ROI, here's the benefit that we've seen from these, that just strengthens that partnership and that, you know, we, we hope that it'll, we'll be able to continue that in the future. Well, it's been, you know, for, for years it's been about e-government, right? And, you know, let's put our services online. First it was all about e-knowledge, just get our information out there. Then it was about e-commerce, right? Now it's about, and now it's really, in my mind, focused on how do we take our services to the people. Instead of, you know, building buildings and having people come into state government to get their services, how do we push it out to them? And you're seeing that just, I just think, an explosion in the mobility area. You know, and think about where, where we are today in 20, 2015, where it's going to be in 2020, right? It's, it's exciting times for us in IT. And I think IT plays a critical role and maybe one of the most important roles as we talk about how we're going to provide customer service to our citizens and our clients in the future. IT is going to drive all of it. And so that's the exciting part about it. And so you're just seeing dramatic changes. I like to say that the IT decade is 18 months, right? So every 18 months, in two years we'll be using technology that hasn't been invented yet um, in some cases, right? That's exciting. But it's also a challenge because how do you stay up with it? So. Uh, that's why we do this, though. If it was easy, they wouldn't need us, right? Oh, no. I, I'm just thinking back in the last couple of years. You know, we've seen um, the state police in Michigan. Uh, they've realized, you know, incredible savings by moving from the post-based model to we have troopers that are based out of their cars now. And that wouldn't have been possible, say, five years ago without the technology. So leveraging that technology really allows you to save money on, you know, bricks and mortar and put it back into more state police or more, you know, more things that will really deliver the results that are needed. And I think we see that in other agencies mm -hmm. as well.